let's quickly talk about what it means to solve an inequality. So the directions here ask us to solve each inequality and state a reason for each step. And then after we're done with that, we're going to graph the set of solutions, keeping an eye out for the border point. And then we're going to check two points, one to the left and one to the right in the original to make sure that we are correct. So let's take a look at our first one here. X minus two is less than negative five. We're gonna start off by solving this the same way we would solve an equation. So I put a line down the middle, separating the left from the right. Now, how would I solve this if this were an equation? I would start by adding two to both sides. Because just like an equation, my goal is to isolate X meaning I need to make a zero term out of that minus two. So that does create a zero term out of the twos, and I'm left with x is less than negative three. Notice the only difference here is that we're not dealing with equations, we're dealing with a less than symbol. So what did we just apply? In equations, this step here would be called the addition property of equality, or APO. But hold on, we're not dealing with equality, we're dealing with inequality, so this is actually called the addition property of inequality, or as we like to call it, a poi. And then we simplified and we have x is less than negative three. So what does this statement actually mean? Well, it means that for our original statement to be true, our solutions must be less than negative three. So let's represent that on our solution graph. Where are the numbers that are less than negative three? Well, I'm gonna start by identifying where negative three is on the number line. And since it's a less than and not equal to, I'm going to use an open point because negative three is not less than negative three. And I know that all of my values to the left are indeed less than negative three. So looking back at the directions, we have now solved the inequality and given a reason for each step. We've graphed the set of solutions and we kept an eye out for the border point, but what does it mean to check two points? Well, here's the deal with inequalities. There are two sides to the graph. In this case, on the left are all of our solutions. These are all the numbers that makes it true. And on the right are all of our non-solutions that would make this false. So by checking two points, we're gonna check a point on the left and a point on the right. Here's where we should have our true solution and here's where it should be false. So for the check, I'm going to choose negative four as my point on the left and negative two as my point on the right. And I'm just plugging it in to see which one's true and which one's false. So does negative four minus two, is that less than negative five? Well, that's negative six. Is negative six less than negative five? Yes, this is true and it should be because negative four is on my solution line. Let's just double check with negative two. Is negative two minus two less than negative five? Is negative four less than negative five? This is false. We wanted this to be false because negative two is not one of our solutions. So basically, because negative four was true and negative two was false, we know that our solutions are in the right spot and our border point is in the right spot, which means I like to then come over and put a box around my final inequality statement to show I have now found the correct solutions for X. Let's take a look at number two. I start by putting a line down the middle of the inequality and I'm gonna solve this the same way that I would solve an equation. My goal is to isolate X. How would we solve this one? Now in an equation, this would be called division property of equality or depo, but since we're dealing with inequality, we would call this division property of inequality or depoi. Now that X is isolated, we can come over to our graph here and represent all solutions. I'm gonna start with an open point on negative three because the inequality is not equal to. And since X is greater than negative three, that means all the solutions are to the right. Here are all of the numbers greater than negative three. Now, just like we did in the last example, we need to check two points, one on the left and one on the right. 
So this time we're still going to check negative 4 from the left and negative 2 from the right, but this time negative 4 is not part of our solution set. So when I check it, negative 4 should be false. And this time negative 2 is part of our solution set, so negative 2 should be true. Let's check it to see if that's actually correct. 3 times negative 4 greater than negative 9? Is negative 12 greater than negative 9? No, this is false, and that's exactly what we wanted. We wanted this to be a false statement because that means negative 4 is not a solution. To double check, does 3 times negative 2 amount to greater than negative 9? Is negative 6 greater than negative 9? Yes, and that matches our solution graph because negative 2 is on our line. So now that we have checked both sides, we know our border point is in the right spot, and we know that our solution set is also in the right spot. Moving on to number three. Go ahead and pause the video now so that you can solve this one, and then unpause when you're ready to graph. Great. Did you get negative 8 is less than or equal to x? If so, we're ready to go. Coming over to our graph, I've identified negative 5, negative 6, negative Here's negative 8, and since it's less than or equal to, I'm going to put my point directly on negative 8 and close it. Now I'm going to do this next part wrong, so do not, under any circumstances, copy down what I'm doing. What if I thought that this graph was supposed to go to the left, because I see less than and less than means left, right? Here's where the check comes in handy. I'm going to check two points, negative 9 and negative 7, negative 9 and negative 7. According to my graph, because negative 9 is on my line, this should make it true. And because negative 7 is not, this should make it false. Let's see what happens. Negative 5 is less than or equal to 3 plus negative 9. Is negative 5 less than or equal to negative 6? No, this is not true. Negative 5 is greater than negative 6. If this happens, that means there is a mistake here. And I think we already know what that mistake is. When I went to graph this line, I wasn't thinking about the fact that the variable is on the other side. If negative 8 is less than or equal to x, that means x is greater than or equal to negative 8. So if this happens while you're checking, it's a pretty easy fix. I'm still starting at negative 8, but the values greater than negative 8 are all the way to the right. And you don't have to erase your check. I'm still going to check negative 9 and negative 7, but now negative 9 should not be true because it's not part of my solution set, which is good so far because my check did show that this is false. So let's check negative 7 and see what happens. Negative 5 less than or equal to 3 plus negative 7. Is negative 5 less than or equal to negative 4? Yes, and now that matches what's on my graph because negative 7 is actually on the solution line. So now that I know for certain that my graph is correct, I'm going to put a box around my final answer comparing x. Last one, solve it just like you would an equation. I'm going to start by multiplying both sides by 3 to eliminate what's in the denominator, and that's called mpoi. Now I'm bringing down 2x is less than or equal to 12. Now I can go in and divide both sides by 2, creating my other big one using dpoi, and I have x is less than or equal to 6. Let's graph, check, and see how we did. Closed point, less than 6 means any number to the left. Those are all of my solutions. I'm going to check 5 on the left and 7 on the right. Let's see. Uh-oh. 5 and 7 times 2 thirds? That doesn't sound very fun. I'm going to have to deal with fractions. So actually, I'm going to pick different numbers. I'm going to choose to check 3 on the left and 9 on the right, and I'll show you why I'm going to do that. 2 thirds of 3 is less than or equal to 4. 
Well, that's 2 times 3 divided by 3, less than or equal 4. 3 divided by 3 is just 1. Is 2 less than or equal to 4? Yes, this is true. And that does match what my graph shows me because on my graph, 3 is a solution. Over here is 2 thirds of 9 less than or equal to 4. Well, that's 2 times 9 divided by 3. That's 2 times 9 is 18 divided by 3 is 6. Is 6 less than or equal to 4? No, this is false, and that's good because it's not on my line. So why did I choose 3 and 9? Well, it's because I knew I was going to have to eventually divide by 3. And if you don't want to deal with fractions, you should pick numbers that are actually divisible by 3. It would have still worked if you picked regular numbers. You would have just had to deal with fractions or decimals. And there you have it. We solve inequalities the same way that we would solve an equation. The only difference is once you solve it, you need to graph the set of solutions and check two different points in the original inequality. One should always be true and one should always be false. If that's not the case, you made a mistake, go back and fix your work.